Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called Pumpkin Spice. It's kind of lengthy, so bear with me. The ingredients you need are an ounce of pumpkin spice syrup, two ounces of bourbon, a fourth ounce of lemon juice, four ounces of soda water, and some lemon wedges. And then for the pumpkin spice simple syrup, you'll need eight ounces of pumpkin puree, one cup of water, one cup of granulated sugar, a half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. And then for the cinnamon rimming, you're going to need a half a tablespoon of ground cinnamon, a half a tablespoon of ground ginger a pinch of ground allspice and a half tablespoon of brown sugar. And this is how you're going to make it, y'all. Here's where it gets lengthy, but it sounds tasty. Okay, so to make the simple syrup, you're going to add the pumpkin puree, puree, water, sugar, and pumpkin pie spice to a small saucepan. Bring that mixture to a boil over a medium-high heat, stirring constantly. Once the syrup is boiling and smooth, remove that from the heat and let it sit for about 15 minutes. Then you're going to strain the pumpkin mixture into an airtight container. Let cool completely before making the cocktail. That you can save that for up to a week. That's cool. Rub the edge of the the rocks glass with a lemon wedge. Pour the rimming sugar into a shallow dish. Rim the rocks glass with sugar and set aside. Then, last part, fill a cocktail shaker with ice. Add the pumpkin spice syrup, the bourbon, and lemon juice for the cocktail. Shake well and fill your rimmed rocks glass with ice. Strain the cocktail into the glass. Top with soda water. Try. I missed it. What was the alcohol in that? Bourbon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I kept missing. I'm like, damn, it's a lot of ingredients. That's do a lot. Like, do you like pumpkin desserts around the holidays? I do. I love pumpkin pie and I like pumpkin flavored things. <laughs> you don't? I don't like pumpkin pie. I hate it. Um, some pumpkin stuff like at Starbucks. I love the uh, pumpkin muffin. I don't mind the pumpkin spice drinks, but the pumpkin muffin with the little cream cheese in the middle is really good. Mm-hmm. I don't um, have that. Like, it's so yummy. Um, but yeah, I'm I like their pumpkin it. pound cake. Mm. I've never had that. It's mm, good. I try it. I mm. um, I like the fall because it's closer and closer to Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday. I love getting ready for Thanksgiving. Um, I just can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> Oh, and I can't wait to go, but that's the one I get excited for. I'm staying here. Do you know what you're going to do this year? I'm probably going to go to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for Thanksgiving and then to Texas for Christmas. We're thinking, mm-hmm. at least that's what my mom said. My grandma's getting very old and she can't travel and she's in Pittsburgh. So everybody's going to go to her if she lets okay. us, if, depending on how she going to let y'all? Yeah. I remember she, you said she wasn't playing with y'all. <laughs> she's not playing with it. So she might be like, mm-mm, guys. <laughs> FaceTime. <laughs> Zoom. I'm, I'm going to uh, be here for Thanksgiving. My grandma was like, maybe we'll come. And I'm like, you need to stay put. I'll see yeah. you for Christmas. She ain't coming. I know she's It's not just coming. so iffy because it's like grandparents are getting old. And I want because it's like if COVID doesn't get you time is and it's just each day is just like, OK, something's got to give y'all. I got to see my grandmother. My grandma will let me see. I don't want her to travel. I'd rather travel to her. I feel like that's mm-hmm. better. Um, yeah. So we'll see what happens um, this holiday season. But I'm definitely uh, 90% sure that I will be in Atlanta for Thanksgiving um, and then Texas and Louisiana for Christmas. And I can't wait. And I'll probably stay and stay out there for a while in December. Mm-hmm. Uh, spend some time with my family and stuff. Um, probably when you guys hear this, I'll be in Texas. My sister is turning 21. And when's I, her birthday again? October 29th. Yeah, she's turning 21. Um, she has all of these plans. I'm super excited about it. Um, I cannot wait. So we'll see. What's been going on with you? Oh, well, I just been living this little life. Artist back there thank you i didn't even know you could see them back there those were my are you ready little booty (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, no, I'm just um, decompressing from birthday stuff. And I did a deep clean on my apartment today. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, that felt good. Because you know when your place is just messy and then you feel messy? Like, just you're, you can't really think clearly. At least I can't. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's all. That's what I've been working on that and cooking. I don't know why I continue to cook these meals on Sunday. Like I have a family. It's me. What you make? Well, um, I am roasting a chicken right now. I made some brownies <gasps> earlier. That's why I was like, give me a few minutes. I'm waiting on the brownies to come out. So <laughs> the brownies are cooling right now. I am going to sous vide the chicken. So it's been in there for a long time. Um, and then finish it in the oven. Some... Uh, little fingerling potatoes and some rainbow Ooh. carrots and I haven't decided if I'm going to do Brussels sprouts or broccoli. I love them both. I love Brussels sprouts. Me too. They're so good. I eat so many of them though. So I'm like, should I switch it up or not? Probably not. I'll probably have Brussels sprouts. But yeah, that's what I'm cooking for dinner tonight. And um, Are you having a guest over for dinner? Um, Not exactly. I'm having a guest to um, record with. But mm-hmm. I don't know if we're going to eat. We'll uh, you're like, this is my food. <laughs> well, no, I don't mind sharing. But, you know, some people don't eat meat and some people don't. I don't I don't know what he eats. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you want some later, I can come drop you off a plate. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, what was I going to say? Something else is happening. Oh, well, I guess if it comes to me, I'll tell y'all. I can't think of it right now. Mm. Anyway, um, if you don't have anything else, we can go ahead and get to weird sex and then we move on to our discussion for the day. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury like dessert. (laughs) Yeah, a man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest, but you don't really need them to live. So, weird sex this week, super short. This man, he probably has some mental health issues, and I do hope that he gets the help that he needs. But, y'all, this man broke into somebody's house in Dunwoody, which, if you're not from the area, it's a suburb of Atlanta. The Dun Dun? Mm -hmm. He broke into someone's home. I want to say it was an apartment. And um, he tripped the alarm system. No one was home. So, when the alarm company called, he answered the phone. Like, he was the homeowner. And Uh I guess he thought he would be able to bypass the security questions or whatever. Like, what? No. So, of course, he didn't answer the questions. They send the police out there. This man was playing dress up in those people's clothes, answered the door in a robe like that was his shit. What did the people say? masturbating throughout the house. There was semen. Um, But did the alarm company people know that when they got there, he still wasn't the person that lived in that home? Or well, they they knew that it wasn't him because when they asked the questions, the security questions, he failed them. So they were just like, "Oh, okay, thank you." And then they dispatched the police because it's obviously not the owner. So anyway, Mm -hmm. they arrested his ass and shipped him on to jail. Now um, the police felt like you know something wasn't right with him. So I don't know what ended up happening with that. But I just thought that was so crazy. How do you break into somebody's home, put on their shit? masturbate throughout their house, leaving your nut all over the place. It's just disgusting. Lock your doors. I don't always lock mine, but I need to. Lock your doors. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm bad at that. Lock your doors. Mm -hmm. I hope mine is locked That's crazy. Isn't it? People are Have you ever had someone break into your house? Mm -mm. (laughs) By the grace of God, no. Uh, It's the crazy my sister today thought someone was breaking into her house she was like someone's jiggling the door handle and i was mm-hmm. like what and then she was like it's it's happening again and then she heard like banging and i was like she was like maybe there's construction going on and so she i was like well call the leasing office and see if they have construction going on what ended up happening was my sister loves decorating right she's been sick so she can't a group of her friends came to her apartment and decorated the whole outside there's like a fall basket there's a pumpkin mm-hmm. man there's That's and sweet. they decorate i was like them niggas could have got shot but that is sweet <laughs> so sweet oh my God. so sweet have you ever walked into the wrong apartment no but i've walked into the wrong uber and it wasn't even an uber it was just a car how, how? <laughs> the car pulled up and i just wasn't paying attention opened the door and they were like what are you doing and i was like 
aren't you my Uber? And they're like, no. <laughs> Somebody has walked to my car, walked in, walked to me and got in my car. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And they were like, aren't dangerous. you the Uber? And I'm like, no, I'm not the Uber. The fuck? I have walked into somebody else's house, so by mistake like um like you know when you're carrying a bunch of stuff inside and you're not really paying attention you get off on get off the elevator on the wrong floor and you go to like where your apartment is on that same mm-hmm. uh, but on a different level and then their door just happened to be unlocked and i walked in and i was like oh my god and like the way my apartment is set up you have to go deep in there to even notice anything is off for real <laughs> so I'm all in the kitchen. So you're all the way in there. You're like, yeah. and I was like, oh my god, so sorry, so sorry. And I just kept saying so sorry as I like ran out of their apartment. Were they laughing or were they looking at you like they didn't see me? I don't know if they were in the bedroom, the bathroom, or what. I didn't see anybody, but I just said it so that they would know nobody was trying to break in because I just walked on up in there. What a mess! But uh, what I try mess. to pay more attention to my surroundings these days so that. um that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So this week I wanted to talk about like beauty standards and the pressure of like outside influences, whatever those may be for you can be. And like what kind of things we do to ourselves to make ourselves look beautiful or feel beautiful or whatever else and how it affects our dating life. Um mm-hmm. I was talking uh, to a friend who is getting some work done, um, some cosmetic surgery. And she was saying how she was really excited because of um, the attention that she felt she was going to get after she got the surgery. So I'm like, yeah, okay. But then it made me ask her, like, well, why are you getting it? Is Mm -hmm. it for the attention or is the attention a bonus or what? Because, you know, I mean, it's totally up to her what she decides to do with her body. But I just hope that she would do it for herself, you know, and not just the other things. And then like the other day when we were talking and we were talking about how expensive it is, all of the upkeep that we go through, Mm -hmm. like regular stuff, nails, pedicure, hair, lashes, eyebrows, Mm -hmm. skin treatments, like... (sighs) It's expensive. And sometimes I feel like it's appreciated and other times it's not. And then other times I wish people would shut up about whatever we choose to do, you know? So what Mm -hmm. do you think, what's the most expensive thing that you do on a regular basis? I would honestly say, uh, like I haven't had any plastic surgery or anything like that done. No, I mean like hair, nails, whatever. Those would probably be it. Lashes. And I think my lashes are 195. These are strips right now. Normally I have the extensions and those are 195. And then hair wow, that ranges so for your lashes every three weeks. And then, you know, if you miss that fill period, then you got to get a whole new set, whether you were good with your lashes or not. They're like, no, well, this is the price. Um, Hair, it always ranges because this ponytail, $95. And that doesn't include, like, if you have to buy your actual hair. Oh, my mm-hmm. goodness. Like, when I was buying hair, mm-hmm. girl, I'm trying to even remember. For if you, you typically need, like, four bundles at $85 a bundle. For a ponytail? Bruh. No, no, no. I'm just saying for a sewing. I switch oh. it up sometimes. Sometimes it's a sewing. Sometimes well, it's a ponytail. No, wait be- a damn minute. <laughs> no, I think this is two bundles. Mm. But still, if I would have bought that hair, that's a that's a two hundred dollar uh, ponytail. That's coming out. It should be out now. I would say that's the most expensive thing. My lashes you and my hair. That every day. <laughs> that we record. <laughs> it's like the past four days. Don't tell me it's coming out, but I understand it's a process. Um, yeah, lashes. Hair is expensive too. Like, okay, so everybody was asking me a million questions when I did the eye tips. The eye tips are pricey. Now, the only thing about eye tips and micro links, you don't need nearly as much hair to add in. It's way less hair because your hair is out with it. So uh, you're not buying as much hair. They can't even fit that much hair. So if you were to get micro links, you would need like one bundle, maybe a bundle and a half. Even if it's not the same length? Yeah. Because huh. it's still like, it's how much space you have in your head. Hmm. And with your hair out, 
and for it to be flat so it doesn't look like a helmet, you can't put that much hair in there. And it needs to be able to move and everything so that it blends. Um, and then with the eye tips, the eye tips, they sell those in pieces. But um, I was talking to a guy one day and... I'm sure he thought he was giving me a compliment, but I find it to be incredibly annoying when people tell me anything to do with my uh, physical appearance. I do the shit because I want to do it, you know? So I don't need you mm-hmm. to say, oh, you don't need all of that makeup. You don't need to buy weave. Well, guess what? I want to. Sometimes I want to switch up my look. I want it to look yeah. different. I want to have a pop of color on my eyes. I ain't got no eyelashes on right now because I... I had to start recording this in the middle of me beating my face. So excuse me, y'all. But, you know, it's just mm, I just find it frustrating sometimes when people have the the stuff that we go through and then people feeling like we do it for them. So they feel like their opinions really matter that much. <sighs> and, and the crazy thing it's is my stuff, you know, it's my stuff. It's how I look and. I want to wear makeup. It is very annoying when when men are like, you don't need all that makeup, but I want it. Yeah, I was on Instagram live and this guy's like, ooh, that's way too much makeup for me. Boy, fuck you. First of all, I wouldn't do my makeup for you, so I don't, it, it's too much for you. How? When it's not yours. And then it's like, I feel like most of the time guys don't really appreciate it. They don't understand all of the steps it takes or what happens when we go get our makeup done or whatever else. Like, we do it for us, for real. It's nice to get compliments, you know, from them when they want to give them. But I think it. we like to be confident in what we look like or just enjoy the process. I like putting on makeup. It's I like putting on makeup. Me. I like getting my makeup done. I like changing my hair. And to be quite frankly, like to be quite frank, <laughs> I sometimes I don't like, you know, I understand the whole like embrace your natural beauty and love yourself. I really do. But I don't like wearing my real hair. And it's not that I like hate my real hair, but it gets puffy. It's not like it just it, it's sometimes it's not manageable. And I just I don't want to wear my real hair when people are like, oh, you got hair. I do have hair. I have a lot of hair, but I don't like wearing it. I don't I like hate, how it looks. I hate the idea that because girls wear weave that they're bald headed. Black girls, let's be clear. When black girls wear weave, and it's it means like, we're bald headed. What? Well, I feel like a lot of times people don't think that the other girls wear weave. And that's mm-hmm. a major misconception. Lots of people got pieces in their hair. Trust and believe. But it's like just because you want something extra, maybe you don't want to put all the heat on your hair. Maybe you just don't feel like it, like what you just said. It's so much to it. It's annoying. Mm-hmm tired of it it's annoying and it's it's, it is if you want to say something about my hair ask me how much it's gonna cost to get it done and send me the money now that's a conversation i'm willing to have but even like anything across the board when i feel like if you see somebody and they have something done their hair their nails Mm -hmm. lip fillers whatever if you like it give them a compliment if you don't shut the fuck up that's it you don't need to ask a ton of questions about Oh, can I touch your hair? I don't like when people do that. That annoys the fuck out of me. Right. Unless somebody's playing. Mean, it doesn't annoy me if like we're in private and you're planning on like if let's say I have someone wanted to know like I have this ponytail and it really is cool how Cola like wrapped it around because people didn't used to do ponytails like that. So if you just wanted to feel and see how it was done and we're in private, okay. Or you want to feel a little uh, eye tipped because you plan on getting it. Okay. We need to be in private. Don't be all out at the restaurant. Like, can I put my fingers in your hair and feel? Oh my god, it feels so good. I swear, every time I get online and I'm talking about anything, people got a million one questions. This is not a beauty channel. I don't need you asking me every 15 minutes. Are those eye tips? Is that micro links? Hey, guess what? I'm not bald headed. I have hair. Mm -hmm. How about pay attention to what I'm saying? You're throwing me off. I can't focus anyway. Um, I don't like when people touch it. I don't like when people just have a million and one questions and for what? Sometimes I'm like, do you want to do it? I feel like sometimes people just like keep going and keep going. They're so inquisitive and it's not a private conversation. Like we'll be at dinner or at a party or wherever. I just wonder what goes through people's heads when they do that. I've never done that to anybody. So I just don't get it. Do you feel... 
less pretty when you don't have all the things, hair, makeup, lips, anything like when it's, you know, sometimes you just go through a week where you just don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. Your eyelashes is falling out. It's like yeah, the re-up. Yeah, I, like I look rough and sad and <laughs> <laughs> unemployed. I, I don't. And it doesn't even have to be makeup, but like when it's just like, I haven't washed my hair in over a week. And it's dirty. I've got dandruff. Um, no makeup on. I need to get my eyebrows remicrobladed. So they're looking very thin. I ain't got no eyelashes, as you can see. Um, if I'm having a breakout, yeah, I do feel less pretty. And those are, are sad they days. They're sad. Isn't it crazy how it can affect your day? Like, <laughs> I do value the people in my life that don't do all these things and they still are just as confident and still like they don't let it affect them. But it does affect me. Like it can affect like the course of like my attitude, my attitude. <laughs> I don't think it'll affect when my I attitude. I just don't feel cute. And it's like. If it's like, okay, well, I know I'm getting my hair done tomorrow. I'm getting my lashes done. I'm getting my nails done. I'm getting all these things done in a couple of days. I'm not going out. I'm not doing stuff. I, I just don't feel it. I do. It affects how I feel. It affects my confidence, everything. It's really like interesting it. because there was a time when, like, none of this was a thing. No, Microblading. Oh, Microblading my eyebrows? Like, what I mean? my, but filling them in and stuff. It's just easier. So then I don't have to put on makeup. But I've been filling in my eyebrows since college. No, but I'm saying like back in the day, day when it was like we were getting thin eyebrows and that was what was in. And there was definitely no thought of eyelash extensions. Like what? Kids in high school now, they get, they probably getting lash extensions. I could not imagine what I would have looked like in high school if we had all these things. Bro, fine I as fuck. I would have been able to get them though. My mom definitely would have been like, absolutely not. I don't know. I probably would have just done it anyway because I work. So I would have been able to pay for it. But I don't know. That, I wonder. I do wonder. It's expensive. I wonder if I would have learned how to do the shit so I could offer the service in college and have another hustle. Mm. You know, <laughs> I don't know. That would yeah. be a thing. The kids now, like I'll watch YouTube videos of girls like doing their makeup. Guys do. And I'm like, how old are you? 17, 18? What the fuck? How do you know how to do look, all of this already? How? I look when I look at old pictures of high school, and I really thought I was cute. Bruh. So if somebody <sighs> has a look, let's just we'll keep it at like simple stuff like hair, makeup, nails and stuff. Uh -huh. And it's not cute. And it's your friend. Do you say something to her or not? I don't. I don't say anything unless she, unless the person asks me. Because honestly, way. just how you said when like, when people start to like tell you things that you, they don't like about you. It's like, what are you saying it for? It's You're just saying it to be mean. I'm not a mean spirited person. If I ever am just like, I don't like your hair. I'm trying to be mean. And that's not typically what I'm trying to be. So like, if you do come around and something's looking crazy, I don't care. That's you. Do your thing. Now, I will say if we go in somewhere and there's going to be men around and they told me to bring bad bitches, we now we do got to switch up the group okay, a little so bit. So what does bad bitches look like when the men tell you bring bad bitches? To me, they look. <laughs> I would say like we have some similarities. Typically, like they look similar to you. Mm -hmm. And not like a not like color or shades or anything like that. But just like you look put together. You feel me? Like you look put together. So there are some hairstyles where it's like, I know it's going to be unacceptable. Like what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do um, want to talk about like the things that men expect of us. So yeah, like what? What do you like? Think if you have a crunchy weave, if you have crunchy weaves, or if you have like a um cheap looking weave or like a quick weave or something like that. That's going to be unacceptable if men are telling me to bring, you know, bring, we aren't pretty girls around. It's just going to be unacceptable. And there's no disrespect to girls that still do that, but, um, uh, it's not going to work out or like a lace front or something. There's some nice ones, but I feel like you gotta have, be a Kardashian and have one of the really nice ones that does not look wiggy. Um, yeah, I just think put together, you're not someone who has to keep asking, does this look good? You know what I mean? I hate when people ask me if if their outfit, for example, looks good. And I know they don't have no other option. But then what do you do? 
What do you do? Because it's like, I saw this meme and I swear it said like, um, you know, your outfit ain't it when you ask your friends how it looks and they say, well, what else you got? But like, if you know that, <laughs> but you know what? Else, and I don't like loaning out all my shit all the time. Hey, how does this look? Now, I do want the, I want you to be honest. Like, I do want you to be like, well, okay. But what you going to do if it doesn't look good and you have no other options? You just going to go home? Maybe. Where are we going? I'm like, okay, okay y'all. I'm not going. <laughs> I feel like that's something you got to ask before you leave the house. So just in case, or if you're unsure, uh, pack some extra stuff. Um, have you ever been in a situation where somebody uh, looked at your outfit and was like, hmm, I guess. I have not. Somebody did that to me recently. Uh, what was and the outfit? What I wore to your party. <gasps> Somebody looked at you and said, hmm, I guess. They didn't say that, but that was what I got from it. And I was just like. Not this is at the party or when you were on the way to the party? No, not at the party. Oh. Before I went to the party. Um, but I thought my outfit looked cute. I think it was you too. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, okay, with certain people, I don't even care about their opinion. First of all, I didn't ask. Second, it's like people have a lot of nerve. Like girl, people have nerve every day. Um, I I don't know what that was about. Uh, but I was just like, huh, okay. Um, but yeah, sometimes I feel like when people say things about my parents, sometimes they don't like it, and that's cool. I don't care because if I'm leaving the house and I'm going somewhere, I feel confident in what I have on, what I look like, because mm. otherwise I'll stay my black ass at home. Mm -hmm. where I like to be anyway um, but sometimes I feel like it's almost like are people trying to test your confidence are people I trying so. to make you not feel good and it makes me look at you funny like why would you say that or do that or whatever I just don't like it to me that has to be the only thing that you're trying to do because like you said it's like what are you my outfit doesn't look good for if I didn't ask you. I obviously like it. And then naturally, mm -hmm. if someone does tell you, I've had people say things about hair before or makeup, like yours, looking a, little, mm -hmm. looking a little too much. And it's like naturally, you it does make you feel like, oh, do I look like I'm doing? Do I look bad? And you know, you go to the bathroom and look in the mirror, like. Let me double check. Did I miss something? <laughs> Are my eyes blurry? I don't like it. And um, I can't say that I've always been this way. I probably gave some people some looks back in the day. But mm -hmm. I've really been making a conscious effort in recent years to be um, nicer to people mm -hmm. and more considerate and compassionate to folks. I don't do that. And I wish other people would stop doing that, too. Um, because if I do do it, like you said earlier, I'm purposely being mean. Yeah. So then it's like, well, are you purposely being mean? Or what? What did I do to you? Why? Are the, People are mean. I'm One time I wore, I have this bodysuit that I used to wear and I actually stopped wearing it because of the looks I would get. And it's one of those body suits that you step inside of it and the booty cheeks are cut out so that it lifts your butt out. So your butt, oh. your bare butt is out in the back. And then it has a cinch at the, at the waist part. You cinch it up and you pull it up to your titties and it is just like, you're just locked in. Well, when I wear it with certain outfits, it makes my butt look fake. And sometimes it looks good and sometimes it looks bad. It's really weird. I was going to say, is a good fake or bad fake? Sometimes it's a good fake. Sometimes a, in a dress I learned very quickly it's a bad fake and so I was out and um, one of my friends was like you got diaper booty <laughs> and you're already out and we we're already out and and they said that my booty looked like I was wearing a diaper and I was so for the rest and then I was just so embarrassed but I mean I guess that one I could appreciate but you don't have to say it like that I feel like people be wanting to be mean and they want you to know you look bad I think that there is absolutely nothing wrong with stopping and thinking about what you're going to say before you say it. you don't always have to have diarrhea of the mouth and just shoot stuff out it's rude like, it's, you want somebody to come tell you you got diaper booty? Well, guess what? Your breast smells like a diaper. And then it's, then it's like, with me, I feel like people say things to me. And a lot of times I won't say anything, depending mm -hmm. on the situation. I won't say anything. And I try to just keep it calm because it's it's one or two ways. I'm either just going to keep it calm or then I'm going to start being super bitchy. And it's going to be hard to turn that off, mm -hmm. especially now that I'm not drinking. I get like that if you have the nerve to tell me something and 
I'm looking at you like you're not cute. I get that hollered at when I don't cute. have no makeup on, eyelashes or weave. Shut the fuck up. And even aside from getting hollered at, it's like, have you ever had somebody who seen themselves and then they try to put that energy on you and it's like well mm-hmm. i'm fine but now that you second guessing yourself you want to make me second guess my outfit i'm not doing that with you today i don't like doing all of that um so a lot of times i don't even like to get ready with folks because <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to hear meet me at the spot don't come <laughs> ask me don't call me ask me what i'm gonna wear i'm not gonna call you and ask what you're gonna wear we're not gonna mm-hmm. worry about it and when we get out whatever happens happens and that's just it And there is that. It is so important to take excellent care of your body from the inside out. That's what got me into Native. My Native deodorant doesn't just block odor better. It's made better. Native has ingredients you've heard of like coconut oil, shea butter, and tapioca starch. It's also vegan and it's never, ever tested on animals. Did you know that aluminum is often found in deodorants. Did you know that aluminum is often found in other deodorants and it can plug your sweat glands and keep you from sweating? That's why Native never uses ingredients like aluminum, parabens, sulfates, or talc. Switching to an aluminum-free deodorant doesn't mean you have to sacrifice on odor protection. I know what you're thinking. Native will keep you smelling fresh and feeling fresh all day long. With over 10 cents, including rotating seasonals, Native has something for everyone. Their most popular scents are coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, and citrus and herbal. My personal favorite is the lavender and rose. I love anything that you can order online so that we can stay safe without having to be out in the stores and without forgetting things if you know that you make your shopping list and you're going online to buy you'll get it when you go to the grocery store you know i was super nervous about using natural deodorants i've said it a million times and i mean it but with native nobody's telling me i smell like a bag of onions i'm not sweating through clothes so i know that it works Native is totally risk-free to try. Every product comes with free shipping within the U.S., plus free 30-day returns and exchanges. See why so many people love Native and check out the over 14,000 five-star reviews. Native is constantly improving as well. Native now has plastic-free packaging for their deodorants. The plastic-free deodorant is going to be available in five different scents for men and women, coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, charcoal, and citrus and herbal musk. The deodorant will also be shipped in a plastic-free bag made from 100% recycled paper. Gotta take care of the earth. All of this goes hand in hand with the introduction of Native's Plastic Free by 23 initiative that aims to provide sustainable packaging options for all of their products by the end of 2023, which is a huge step. And now for a limited time for all my pumpkin spice ladies and gents out there, there is a scent coming back. Native first introduced the pumpkin spice latte as a novelty scent back in 2017. And now it is one of the most anticipated launches of the year. So if this is what you've been waiting on, you want to smell like fall in your pits, then you need to get the pumpkin spice latte scent. Do what I did and make the switch to Native today by going to nativedo.com slash cocktails or use promo code cocktails at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash cocktails or use promo code cocktails for 20% off your first order. And now let's get back to the show. Now, what about like, um, have you ever had a phase where you were trying to like, like, let's talk about our bodies and trying to get maybe drop some weight or get some more muscle definition. Have you ever done like a crazy diet or like went super hard in the gym? Absolutely. And I wish I could stick to it. I can, I can, I hate st- those phases. <laughs> I, 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 it's like a love hate. Cause when you see yourself, you're like, Oh, this is so worth it. But food makes life fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why it makes it's it hard so for me. Fun. But I, 
I've noticed when I go through those phases of like trying to drastically lose weight or in the gym a lot, eating really healthy, I can't do much. I can't have much of a social life. It's so and hard. It's very hard. And so there's like a level of like a little bit of sadness that comes into it for me because you're trying to accomplish something and you know your friends want to drink or you know they want to eat cookies and brownies. And it's like, ugh. I, I know I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a lot of discipline with that. And so it's like I try and then I get frustrated when people want to um, like get me off track. And then I feel like I get when I get really serious, about, which never lasts long. But when I get really serious about eating healthy, dieting uh, specifically, the working out can last longer. Um, but the dieting. I get the most offers to like go hang out and eat and drink, to go on dates. Isn't and all that of crazy? That. I, think I should go on a diet, and then when I'm on my diet, I'm gonna get all the dates. Hmm, that might work because that's what always happens. It's like, oh, let me take you to this steakhouse. I know you love steak. I'm not trying to eat no steak. Oh you my, I need a salad. Fish with lots of vegetables, water, other bullshit. Maybe I'll treat myself to a vodka soda. Are now you're are you on a diet right now? Are you doing something drastic or you're just doing no no uh, alcohol? Just no alcohol. I'm trying not to um, I was trying not to have too much sugar, but I got a whole bunch of Halloween candy today. So that's canceled. For trick or treaters? For me. Oh, okay, okay. And whoever, you know, of me, uh, whoever might stop by, I don't think it's going to be no trick-or-treaters. I definitely won't be opening the door for trick-or-treaters. Oh, I won't even right. be here. I'll be um, in Texas. But yeah, I don't think it'll be many trick-or-treaters, but I just wanted some candy. So I got some some of them little variety packs of the fun size candy. I've been eating them all day. And, and I haven't what? had much soda. I want more. That's good. That's good. No, so does good. I'm always stuck between like, oh, you only live once. Or do you ever like have that battle where you're like, I want to be healthy. I'm going to be super healthy. But then you're like, oh, okay, like you only live once. I'm about to enjoy this fried chicken and waffles. I love chicken and waffles. I, I don't necessarily like that combo. <laughs> but I do love chicken. Um, Yeah, it's, it's, sometimes I am like that. And then it's like, okay, I'm stressing myself out to try and achieve whatever goal it is that I may have. And for what? Mm -hmm. it's, sometimes it's just like the good is not outweighing the bad today. It's going to lose. So I'm just going to eat what I want to eat. Um, what I find to be easier for me is just not eat as much, eat in moderation. Mm -hmm. And then I find when I cook, especially if I'm cooking something that's like really labor intensive, I won't eat that much of it. Mm -hmm. I think I, I don't know if I get tired of eating or if I get full off of the aromas, but it helps. So we'll see. But yeah, mm -mm. I'm not doing a diet right now. Do you ever get worried about what you're going to look like when we're old, like actually old? Like, I know sometimes we joke about it now, but I'm talking about like 50, 55. Yeah, well, I've been uh, vocal about the fact I don't mind nip tucks, okay? Um, Botox is going to be my friend. Um, as soon as they say, okay, we see enough wrinkles to where it's got, we are eliminating those, okay? If mm -hmm. I start getting crow's feet, if I get those bags under my eyes, It's going to go. Um, so I am worried about it. I don't think I want to do like an actual facelift where they cut my face and suck it back. I don't want to look like Jane Fonda or nothing like that. Um, but I do get worried about it. And then I also think about my health and like the health of family members. Because, you know, every time you go to the doctor and you do your exams and they're asking you these same questions that they already have in their charts. Mm -hmm. It does make me think like. Okay, I can make some little changes, but I want them to last. It's hard. I get worried about it. I wonder if my hair is going to be gray. Like, am I going to have black hair when I'm old? I think I'm going to get gray. My, my grandmother has, like, white, white hair. Like, white. That's what I would want if I was really old. I want it to be white. I don't want it to be that dingy color. I don't want salt and pepper. I want to be, like, an ice queen. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to be one of those old ladies trying to look young. You're going to embrace the age. Wait. Uh, <laughs> hold on I don't mind the way but I still want it to be like when I say I'm 75 years old I want people to be like oh wow really yeah I want to maintain some youth but I don't want to look 30 for the rest mm -hmm. of my life you know I, mm -mm. I don't want to look too young I also don't want to be dressing too young on one of my shows one of the ladies Karen is well into her 50s and she still dresses like she's trying to be a fashion over model 
Oh, I'm, I'm already on that though. Left. I'm already on the whole like don't like dress your age and if you don't understand what I'm saying well I don't know how to explain it but I do know like at this point in my life the darks of my butt cheeks shouldn't be showing <laughs> you know what I mean and when it's winter outside I'm not you know when you're younger it's cold and you don't dress accordingly you still have your toes out legs out no. you ashy I no, am past I cold <laughs> yes like that's what I'm saying I when I was- do the toes out in the winter and shorts and shit uh uh-uh. uh I'm scared of pneumonia <laughs> and all the other things my grandparents would say you need to put a coat on you need to put a hat on you're gonna get pneumonia mm-hmm. are you afraid of what you'll look like when you get old or do you think about it a lot I don't want to get old I don't I really don't want to get what old old you mean <laughs> it just you just want to tap out <laughs> I just want to get old. The, my my saving grace is I look at my family, the ladies on both sides of my family, and I look at everybody's body. And I mean, it's inevitable that you're going to get saggy, even if you get work. You know how old ladies just be looking old. Your skin doesn't snap back. Um, I'm scared of that. I don't want to like... Have that neck, that loose neck. That loose neck. But a lot of the ladies in my family, they do look good, like, for their age. Mm -hmm. Even my grandma, like, she's old, old, but, like, she still looks really good and her skin is pretty. My mom, she looks good. She's in her 60s. Like, but I do you do look at your parents and when you see old pictures of them when they were younger and you're like, wow, you're really old now. I think about that with my grandparents because I think that they have had the most dramatic physical changes that really? I've been able to like really see. Um, in my eyes. So my grandparents are in their seventies, um, their late seventies. And so I remember them being a lot more like able to move around really easily, like no health issues for real. And then I've just seen things change every year. Like my grandfather, I think I shared, he was blind for a while. He can kind Mm -hmm. of see now his vision is coming back, but he was one, he couldn't see shit. Um, He would know if like, or have an idea if it was light or dark, but that's it. No colors, no really, nothing. Yeah. He had, um, was, I think it was a laser eye surgery or something. He had some kind of surgery on his eyes. Um, and he could see when he went into surgery and the doctor, um, dropped the lens of his eye that they had cut off in the back of his eye. Um, and, or eyes and whoever the doctor is, I didn't even know there were so many different types of specialties for the eye, but apparently whoever the surgeon was, that was working on the front, um, doesn't work on the back or maybe doesn't specialize on the back. So Mm -hmm. he had to wait because that other doctor was on vacation. So he had to wait. So he was blind. Um, he couldn't see. So he had to wait for a very long time to even try to have any sort of corrective surgeries. And then he has other health issues that I'm not sure if it played a role in it or not, but he could not see for a long time. And we told him to sue that goddamn doctor. I was just about to say, did he sue Mm -mm. He said he didn't want to sue them. He was, he just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe God told him not to sue. I don't know, but I told him to sue. And so did the rest of the family, but he didn't want to. So you know how that goes. But anyway, yeah, um, he couldn't see. And then he's in a wheelchair and just, um, he has, um, kidney disease and he's had it for a very long time. Honestly, he wasn't supposed to be around this long, but he's Mm -hmm. still kicking it and he goes to dialysis and like all the stuff that I've seen, like I've seen him lose lots and lots of weight. He Mm -hmm. has a beard now. He never had a beard, but he lets it grow in for whatever reason probably because he's cold because he's so goddamn skinny now and then just like the way my grandma looks I look at her hair getting whiter and whiter Mm -hmm. and whiter as the time goes on she used to just have like salt and pepper around the edges and the rest was black and now Mm -hmm. it's practically all white and it's just crazy to like watch these changes my parents look different too but it's not as drastic well my dad my dad is drastic, but it's reverse drastic. My dad used to be a chubby, a chubby man, very unhealthy, didn't eat good. And now if you see my dad today and talk to my dad today, he is very slim, very, he, he still can beat somebody on the basketball court, still can run a marathon. And my dad's, if he's not 70, he's about to be 70. And, um, he has drastically changed. Like he changed his whole, um, he's a raw vegan. So everything my dad Ooh, eats is Jesus. raw. 
I don't know how he does it. Very focused. Every now and again, he'll eat some cooked vegetables. But for the most mm-hmm. part, he's a raw vegan. His vitamins cost like $100. My mom gets mad every month when he buys them. <laughs> um, but his change was like that. And I look at my dad and I look up to him because I'm like, that really takes focus and hard work. Like... To sit, at Thanksgiving, we all still eat normal, and my dad will just have vegetables. I can't do it. I can't do it. I Especially can't if it's raw. It. Listen, hell, girl, I may as well t- take me to the king at that point because there's nothing left on earth for me. <laughs> I enjoy it too much. It's part of my problem, but I enjoy food way too much. So, like the, I don't think I could ever be a raw vegan. I tried to be a vegan last year. I was trying to be like Beyonce and do it for however many days. She said I got a book in here somewhere, probably on my bookshelf, with like all these vegan recipes. And I convinced um, one of my friends to do it with me. I left her hanging. I was like, "Girl, I've been cussing everybody out. It's only day five. I can't do this." <laughs> I have <laughs> done it. I've I've tried a couple of different times and I can I can do it for a minute. My What's thing is I can do it for I, one minute as in 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it for a strong like two month maybe two. I remember there was a moment where I was really going strong with the vegan food, but here is my thing. It gets very expensive and then you start picking things in your life like okay, well do I want to go on a trip or do I want to make sure I'm stocked with vegan food? You can get a thing of vegan cheese and it's like not even big. It's like this big and that's like $19 and it's going to last you it's like not three even days. good. <laughs> I think it is good. The cashew queso. It don't taste No. 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 Have you ever had jackfruit, barbecue jackfruit? I hate jackfruit. Really? I've had it, yes. Oh, I love love it. I think it's a texture thing for me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I make a pulled barbecue jackfruit sandwich, and it tastes just like pulled barbecue chicken to me. Like, if I have the ingredients, if if I had, like, all the money in the world to just always make sure I'm stocked up, I could do it. But I don't. (laughs) Mm. And every now and then you'd be hungry in the car. You'd be like, let me just stop and grab a pub sub. (laughs) (laughs) Uh -uh. Would you ever do like any sort of, uh, what am I looking for? Any sort of like injectable in your face or neck? What would you do? The only thing that I want to do is the, my under eye bags. And y'all, I went to, Kiki suggested a place that I go to and I went for my consultation and I was going to get it done before my birthday so my eyes wouldn't be bruised and I was ready. But when I did the consultation, the lady actually told me that I have, if I look down, you can really see them. And I have pockets. And so she was like, she suggested that I go and get the $6,000 surgery where they slit your under eyes and suck the fat pockets out. She was saying normally people just have the sunken in and they inject it so it lifts up and it's all smooth together. Now I'm still thinking about getting it because she did say it would ma- it would be less noticeable, but it's not going to take them away. So mm. that's what I would get done. I wait a minute. To- it's six thousand dollars, and it's not going to take it away. No, the surgery is six thousand dollars. The okay. injectable is five eighty eight. The surgery oh. will take it away. Oh, I thought you were saying that she said that if you do the surgery, it will help, but it won't take it away. But I, I will I say, <laughs> I have two friends that got the surgery, and I don't know if they just have different types of pockets. They still have bags under their eyes, and I have read that it just lessens it. But she said that mine should be. That's the thing that gets on my nerves, like with stuff like that. It's like you want people to pay all this guap, and it's not for surgery. Certain. And I've actually seen people where they still have bags. They say that it takes a couple, maybe like a, a year or so for you to really see. God damn. <laughs> Listen, when I go to my lips on, they be on swole immediately. And then they get back down to normal after about two or three weeks. Like, I couldn't have a year a year bro there's a whole youtube video on it the one girl she didn't suggest it but that's really why i'm like is it worth it to go through that and then i don't know if it's actually going to work because i have deep bags i mean i've seen deeper bags and the girls that i'm talking about that got theirs and it didn't work they had i mean deep deep bags yeah i would be on youtube university looking every day who has a face whose bags look like mine let me see their before and after yeah but that's the only thing i think i would get done on my face i used to want to get just a little bit in my top lip because when i smile it's like you know what you (laughs) do what about it 
No. You know, you could get, um, it's called a lip flip. So they put four little units of Botox around mm-hmm. your lip. And it'll pull your lip up to keep it from disappearing when you smile. So it'll really? look normal when it's like that. Yeah. And you know, Botox is like $9 a unit. So it's going to be like 40, 50 bucks. Real? I didn't know that. Yeah. Botox is cheap. And so once I found out how cheap Botox was, I was like, why the fuck some of these bitches with all these wrinkles and the men too, why won't they get a little Botox? <laughs> I guess sometimes I forget that everybody's not like me sometimes and they're not trying to do all of this extra stuff. But it's like, uh, I do that over the damn wrinkle cream. That shit don't be working or it takes too long. No, no, the creams work. The creams don't work. Ask them about the lip flip. I'm going to ask. Take a few minutes if that's what you want. Yeah. And no need for filler because you have a lip. But just put it in there and it'll keep it up when you smile. The girl at the front desk, she had it done. We were talking about it. Really? Nicole, I think is her name with the curly hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had it done. She didn't get any filler or anything. She just did the lip flip. And huh, I'm good. Gonna... She showed me. Really? Like, yeah, girl. Mm-hmm. I bet she'd be getting all... Could you imagine if you worked at a place like that and they're just like, hey, can we practice something real quick? I know, <laughs> right? Like, I won't hire it. You don't want to be doing shit. I could sit there and have my other job and be editing right at the front desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Um... Would you do anything else to your body? Yes, I would definitely get some titties, and I would. Want? I, I would want double D's, and I say that, and that sounds massive, but one of my girlfriends who lives in my building, she has double D's, and she has a smaller body than me, and it looks really good. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if I'm gonna get them, I'm already a full C. I would have to go up to a D anyways. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, if I'm getting some titties, I want some titties. Okay, that's a lot of pain, mm-hmm. money, and everything to go through to come out looking like the same. Yeah. <laughs> With a little and, at the top. <laughs> I would also get uh whatever that removal of um what are those cellulite? I would get that removed from my thighs and I think I would get a butt lift. I don't want anything added in my butt, but just a little lift. Mm. Okay, okay. That's it. That's it. I think that's it. I would do a lot. <laughs> I would absolutely do liposuction. Um, I don't, uh, I wouldn't mind more hips, but I don't want no big old hips. I don't have like big hips. Like I have what they call hip dips. So it kind of goes in a little bit like it. Mm -hmm. It could use a little help. Um, I don't mind. I wouldn't mind boobs. I uh, was researching because I'm considering doing it next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just don't know. I'm like, well, what if I have one of those um, where they have the pocket where it forms that hard pocket? Like your body kind of rejects the implant. Then That's the was, scary thing about getting plastic surgery. Like you're just getting surgery for fun and then some real shit goes wrong. And you're like. And then you'll have like a hard ass titty. I have to get it taken out. But I did see. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know about fat transfers to like your hip and your ass and hips and ass mm-hmm. and stuff. They could do a fat transfer to your titties, too. Really? hmm They can do it to your breasts. So this girl I follow on Instagram, she got implants, and she went through that whole experience where mm-hmm. her um, it was hard, and she had to get it taken out. She had, like, two revisions. Um, and then the last time, she went to this doctor, and they took out the implants, and she did a fat transfer to her boobs. They're still small. I would not... I pro- I mean, I guess if they took all the fat out of my body right now, it would be enough to make it worth it. But mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't do a fat transfer if I didn't have that much fat like her. She I had a lot of fat. Titties. No, she didn't have a lot of fat. Oh. So her titties are still little. And I'm just like, you went through uh, that again. But she, I mean, she likes them. But I just couldn't do it. But I am all for making whatever tweaks to your body that you want whatever making you feel comfortable and i definitely think people should make sure they do it for themselves not other people because people are always gonna have something to say yeah some people will like it some people will hate it but (laughs) do you like it and especially don't do it for like a specific person because other people are temporary you are forever okay yeah girl Mm -hmm. or gentlemen yeah would you feel some type of way if you were dating a guy and he wanted plastic surgery 
Well, it depends. It depends on what it is. Like, I don't really know what all that can get. Like, if he wanted those fake, you know how you can get fake a fake six pack? I would be like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> y'all, y'all get in shape quicker and easier than us. So just get they in the gym. That. I mean, they can do uh, lipo and stuff. Uh, if he got lip fillers. fillers. And so they get their titties removed. I would be okay with that because I could only uh, imagine how bad you feel if you're a man with real titties. Yeah, I would be sad if I was a man with titties. So I would feel for them. Yeah. Taken out. Um, What else have I seen guys do? Lots of muscle stuff, like muscle implants. Like they get stuff in their calves. Um, What else have I seen? I've seen the Botox, the hair transplants. There's a guy on one of my uh, shows that I watch. What's it called? Love After Lockup. I know he has had lip fillers or something, and it looks really strange because I'm imagining he had paper thin lips and mm-hmm. he just pumped them full of stuff. And they're like, it's like I can't. I don't know. It's just like they're deformed or something. They don't. They're not shaped like lips at all. It doesn't even just look like puffy. It's just like. The whole time he talks, she just kind of stare at him like, what is this? Mm-hmm. It's very pink and he has no facial hair. Something's got to give. Um, that's all I can think of that I've seen him get. Yeah. Off the top of my head. That like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess it depends. I, I, wouldn't it want, I wouldn't want a guy who's too vain. Only one of us can be vain. Yeah, and, I would be like, you're worried about the wrong things. Listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to us. Well, the whole like, Don't me. tell me. <laughs> yeah, well, and don't tell me the stuff that you be thinking about. <laughs> um, what else did I think of? Maybe that was it. I don't know. Oh, so okay. Have you ever talked to your family about the stuff that you want to? That you absolutely. My dad is always like. Say? My dad would be like, ah, uh-uh, I don't do that. It's gonna make you look old. It's gonna make you look old. Um, but my mom it's and my sister, make they you look old. <laughs> Like anything. My dad's like, if you're putting anything in your face, you're going to, when you do get old, you're going to be looking real old. You know how sometimes Kylie be looking old when she don't get her stuff done. But, um, my dad says it, but my mom, she's with it. And my sister, she's like, oh my gosh, yes. Like I want to have a whole just month of everybody's just getting the surgery they want. But we be telling my mom, <laughs> mom, you're too old to get the surgery. You can't get it anymore. What does she want to get? She, my mom wants to get everything. She wants, like, she always says tummy tuck. She wants to get a tummy tuck. She wants lipo. She wants her boobs lifted. But we're like, after the Donda West thing happened, I'd be like, if you're already older and you have your life and you had your kids and you have your husband, don't worry about getting work done. Just, I don't know. I would be like your mom. I would still want it. She does still want it. Long she's probably wanted that after you, probably. Yeah. (laughs) That's a long time. Yeah, but my family's with it. They don't. They're not like don't like. My dad's just like I don't get it, but okay. Um, yeah, I was talking to my mom about um, some stuff I want to get done, and I felt like maybe I shouldn't even said anything to her. She's so supportive, but that's all she wants to talk about. And I'm like, oh, the work. Oh, yeah. All right, let's <laughs> relax. Like, so what else is going on? I want to talk about plastic surgery all day. I don't want to talk about this. And what did she say about your lips? Um, she said, why are you doing that? I said, cause she I didn't don't have, yeah, um, I didn't tell her before, but I think she must've called me when I was like at my appointment. I was like, I'm getting my lips done. I'll call you back. So she thought I was joking. So when I called her back, she's like looking at me, we're on FaceTime. She's like, what did you do? I said, I got lip fillers. I've been talking about these, um, for a very long time, as long as I can remember. And I got them. She was like, why did you do that? I said, because I didn't have lips and I really wanted them. And I like it. I'm happy with my results. Um, I am a little swollen right now and it hurts to talk. So I'll talk to you later. Um, but <laughs> later she was talking about it. And then uh, one of my other sisters, she was like, hmm, I think I want it too. Her lips are really thin. It may, I'm not going to lie. When I saw that you had lips, even though I got, I have lips, mm-hmm. it made me, it makes you want to get your lips done. It does. <laughs> to me, like, people are like, why would you do that? I miss your old lips. Okay, I don't. Sayonara, bitch. Those things are gone. I never plan to go back mm-hmm. to not having lips. It just feels good to have lips. A lot of people don't understand what it feels like to be a little black girl with no lips. It's not fun. Everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh, we have this. We have. Well, I don't. 
I ain't got no lip. I'm smiling. The shit disappears. They're paper thin. Like, even when I do like that, it's not much there. It just feels good. And I like them. Um, I don't want them any bigger or anything. So I just have to make sure I time it to when they start to fade away, get my re-up and go back. And mm. don't schedule anything that week. I'm swollen, but yeah, my mom, uh, she was okay with it. My my aunt, um, she kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, but now I was like, whatever, I don't care. Um, she, I don't know. She, they were probably all talking about. It, it probably went through the grapevine of everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Kiki got her lips done. So um, she facetimes me, and um, she was like, "What did you do to your face?" So I was like, I got my lips done. And so she was like, why? And I was like, I wanted them. She was like, "Mm, I like your old. And then my grandma said like something similar. She's like, I like your old lips, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I think that they were just trying to tell me I don't have to make these changes. I don't know if they thought I made it for anybody else. But I was like, you know what? I did have to make this change because this is something that I wanted that would make me happy. So if you don't like it, it's fine. I don't even see all that often. You don't have to look at them. (laughs) They're Mm -hmm. my lips. I don't call you and say, oh, like, what'd you do to your hair? Or why do you have on that lipstick? Mm. or whatever else like I don't I didn't like that but it's whatever I'm still fine with the decision I made and I'm gonna keep going back I done got a little uh they got a little membership thing now and you collect points so you get discounts when you go back Uh yeah Mm -hmm. so I'm in there I mean I'm committed it's just part of my maintenance like hair nails um waxing I'm a very Mm -hmm. hairy girl um and I'll probably always have to do that. You know, I have um, PCOS, and that shit makes you hairy. I get mm-hmm. hairs on my chin, hairs on my lip. Like you can see them or ju- or we can see them? If I didn't remove them, you would see them. Really? Yeah, not like a full beard, but it would be like four hairs. You would see them, yeah. How often do you have to get them? Do you just pluck them out? No, I get, like when I go to get wax, they just wax oh. them. Got you. Um, but lately, they have not been doing facial waxing at the place that I go to. So you, because you have to keep your mask on and everything. So I just wax at home. But I don't know. I guess I do it every three weeks or so or two. Mm-hmm. Whenever I see it's that, it's expensive shit, being a woman. Okay. It is expensive being a woman, bro. It like, is, is. and then it's like if I let the shit go, everybody's like, "Oh, be natural, be natural." If I let that shit go, y'all gonna tell me, "Um, Kiki, why don't you wax? Why don't you do this, that, and the other?" Um, and it's just like you know, it, it, this is what I, the happy trail I be having to wax at. It's very hairy. It's just ridiculous. It's like I'm a little monkey, and I don't like it. <laughs> My skin's all oily. It's it's just uh, so many effects, but yeah. But um, I am looking forward to whatever new stuff they come out with. Um, If I try it, I'll tell you. Maybe you can try it too. Yeah, I'll let you do it first. I'll be scared. Really? I want to do, this isn't like a procedure or anything, but I want to do micro needling next. Um, Micro what? Needling. What is it? Um, If I'm not mistaken, I think it's very similar. You probably, I know you love Kim. You probably saw her do the vampire facial. Mm -hmm. It's similar to that. So they have these little needles that go through and they prick your skin all over. And in Mm -hmm. some process, I don't really know how it works, but um, it rejuvenates your skin and boosts the collagen and it helps your skin to like firm up Mm -hmm. so that like any like, um, if you have texture issues, um, hyperpigmentation, um, wrinkles, creases, it helps it. So the girl who does my lashes, she did it. So I saw her results. It looked. Is she good. black? Mm-hmm. Okay. She's like, you she know how sometimes you gotta know what it looks like on your kind. Mm-hmm. And um, she's she's a little bit darker than me. She had hyperpigmentation, but her skin looks so good. And she's like, I'm going to go back and do it again. She's done a chemical pill before. And she said she likes this better, but yeah. So lately I've been into skin stuff and trying to see what I'm going to do. I want to just maximize my time when I don't actually have to be out in the world with people Mm -hmm. because I can go through that healing process. I would have never been at, when would I find the time to do a chemical pill before, you know, because you have those weeks where your face is just peeling off like a zombie. So I'm looking forward to some more skin treatments. I'll keep you guys updated. I'm supposed to be doing YouTube videos. We'll see. I love happens. skin stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe All my right. head itches. I guess we can move on to Indecisive Diane. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's- do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Hey ladies, it's haunted house season. <laughs> I love a good haunted house. Go get a bay or someone else's. <laughs> Just kidding. And go to a haunted house. My fave is the Netherworld. Go cuddle up under bay. And then when you finish, cuddle up under his nuts. <laughs> Have a good time, ladies. Bye. Okay, and we're back from Indecisive Diane, and it is time for the advice. If you would like some advice, make sure you email us, askcocktails at gmail.com. Okay, so do you have one pulled up already? I do. Let me go to Okay, it. what's the subject line? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. This one's pretty short. She said, hey, ladies, on your last... Mm, this was from a a while ago on your last episode date night you both gave great advice on dates but what are some gifts or ways to tell my man that i am sorry i'm in my 20s and my boyfriend is twice my age he's an old nigga so all that materialistic stuff does not impress him this is my first real relationship and i'm learning that can be mean or things that I say can come out very hurtful, which I am really working on. I blame it on my Leo pride and drive. He's a cancer if that matters. I have asked him his love language, but he is truly appreciative of uh, but he is truly appreciative of everything. I buy things for the bedroom every now and then or try to cook him a fancy dinner. From your personal experience, how have you or how can you show a man you are sorry and you really do care about him? Love y'all. <laughs> I think <laughs> men are a little bit more simple than us, but then it's also like, don't put them all work some men aren't I think you got to pay attention to your man it's hard for me to for me personally to say you can do one specific thing because all of the different men that I've had to say I'm sorry to in life it it <laughs> took it was different sometimes it was just we spent a lot of time sometimes it was a conversation sometimes it's like pay attention to things that he really enjoys and he doesn't talk to you much about it and incorporate that in the apology somehow Yeah, it's really hard to come up with generic stuff for an I'm sorry because you want to, if you're really sorry for whatever the fuck it is you did, um, it needs to be meaningful and you need to show him that you care and that it's not just about you and you're not just in it for a quick fix. You want to do something special for him. So I think you should consider something like what Magina said, but then also whatever it is you did, you might need to have a speech prepared write a note, um, something, because you can't just get a gift to say, I'm sorry. I don't think. Even if you do something cute, like create a little PowerPoint and I'm sorry, PowerPoint or a video (laughs) and send email it to him. And it's like, hello. inside. apologize for my actions. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And even throw something in there to like, maybe make him laugh or remember the good times. That'll be a good touch. Like you want him to feel it. So work on, work on that. Um, yeah. Okay. Next one. This one says finding the people who are sexually open. This one's short too. Hi ladies. I've been listening for a while and since the Rona, I've been catching up on podcasts. Um, I noticed both of you ladies have great stories of peen. However, you don't go into details on how to find people who are sexually open. I feel like we get a lot of emails like this. Mm-hmm. I've been inside, um, but I want to find, I want to find some people for great sex. And I run into people who only make casual conversation and then ghost when sex isn't mentioned any further. I wanted to ask for advice on how and where you meet your people when you want to be casual versus for a relationship and how the arrangement was set up. Well, I'll say um, I had no casual arrangements set up during quarantine, so mm-hmm. I don't know. It's always random when I when I meet somebody, and it's usually somebody who maybe there's some level of physical attraction for, but 
either they let it be known or I let it be known that I'm not looking for anything serious. So really the only other thing we got to do is talk about fucking or not at all. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're coming on too strong. I think um, you just, she just to wants to have casual sex. It's a guy, I think. Oh, he. Um, he wants to find somebody during quarantine time. He's been inside. He's trying to figure out where to find somebody to just have casual sex with. Um, online is going to be your best bet, but That's everybody's not going to be say. cool with it. But I think that some of those people are going to be more open, especially like on Tinder. Tinder is probably more of a hookup app than any of the other Definitely. ones. Definitely. Um, and then, you know, I don't know what you have in your bio, but maybe you need to have something that lets the people know that you're not looking for anything casual. Like, you can literally put that. I mean, that you're only looking for something casual. You're not looking for anything serious. And just keep swiping. You might have to change whatever your expectations are um, as far as what yeah. it looks like. Did he send a picture? Because I'm curious to know what do you look like. Um, mm-hmm. no you might have to pay for it. Yeah, you can always pay for it. That's always an option because let me tell you, girls who are selling pussy, no days off. Okay. No days off. And and you can find some for very cheap. Yeah, because the girls that we've talked to, a lot of the rates are pretty low now. Yeah. You need to have a real conversation with yourself about what your budget is. And that's going to let you know probably the type of woman you can get. And you just need to consider all of those things. And uh, last but certainly not least, buy some sex toys because you might just be shit out of luck. I don't know. If I, I'm not on dating apps looking for something casual. Um, the people that I've had something casual with, I met them in real life. So I don't mm-hmm. know. I was just like, ooh, Same you're here. fine, but you're a hoe. Or, ooh, I had sex with you, but you're a hoe. I couldn't trust you. But we can have sex. I couldn't trust you being in a relationship, you know? So, I don't know. Try it. Try it and see. And look your best. Because if it's just about sex, all that other shit don't really matter that much, really. You'd be looking good. Okay? Yeah. And smelling good and floss. You got it, boy. Mm-hmm. Good luck. These cocktails, these cocktails. I hope I deleted that. Um, So now it's time for us to move on to the cocktails. And if you would like to send us one to read on the show, make sure you email it to us, cocktails at acl at gmail.com. You know I don't have no cocktail. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have no cocktail. I might have one. one. You do have one? I said you could have had one. Like, I don't. If we weren't recording night. back to back, I might have one. But w- the next time we record, maybe I'll have an OG cocktail. Okay. Do you um, have one? I don't. See, so this is the thing. I was going back and forth with somebody, and I said, listen, I'll tell you every time I have sex, these stories don't be story worthy. That's why I've just been telling you every time I have sex. Um, so I will tell you quickly what happened the most recent time I had sex. I got injured again. I, don't, I had to take last night off. I didn't have any sex last night because I felt like I had been hurt twice in a row. I fucked up my nails. And um, what else did I fuck up? Oh, my pussy. So last night I was on break. Um, I don't know what happened. I think the sex, again, got too rough. We're a little overly zealous with the moves and positions. And (laughs) it's like my pussy ripped a little bit or something. Oh, that's the worst. That's happened to me before. But it feels in like a paper cut. So I was like, is Mm -hmm. it your nails? So I was like, you need to go get your nails clipped. Or I won't be fucking you again. And it hurt. Um, it was fun while it lasted. But then in the morning, it was a little uncomfortable. Maybe bleed a little bit. Um, so, guys, uh, please keep your nails trimmed if you want to be touching pussies. Um, because nobody wants a paper cut in their pussy. It's very uncomfortable. And I'm sad about it. And um, that's it. <laughs> I guess I do have a cocktail. Because I, I did go on a date the other day. Yeah, we um, really talk about it. 
We didn't. Um, okay, guys. So an ex of mine popped up in my life. Well, I actually hit him up and said, wow, I can't believe you of all people didn't tell me happy birthday. I hit him up at like, I think it was 1159 the night of my birthday. And he was like, oh, shoot, I'm sorry. I had an emergency happen. Anyways, long story short, he's like, I would love to see you. I was like, what? See me? He was like, I'm in Atlanta. And my heart just stopped. And he was like, let, let me know what day we could go to dinner. So I let him know what day we could go. The day came and I got a call that I had some flowers downstairs in a package. And he sent me some roses with a little note attached to a bottle of champagne. And it said, can't wait for tonight. It was really sweet. But I still didn't think anything of it because, quite frankly, I was thinking about sending him up. Wow. But I didn't. I got to the date. He was like, do you want me to come pick you up? I was like, no, I'll meet you there. He went to this cute little Thai restaurant. And when I got there, oh, he was still just so fine. You know when some people are just fine? Like, you're just like, you're just so beautiful. So we hugged. And I was a little nervous about how I would react. But I was totally normal. I was just normal, Medina. I was like, hey, it's so good to see you. So we sat down at the date. We had some wine. We had some really good food. We talked. Talked. We took a shot and made some bets, ended up kissing at the table. And I was like, oh, fuck. And then I felt his dick. It was still huge. And um, you felt it through the pants, like through the pants. the pants or on the outside of the pants? On the outside. Like I just like oh. placed my hand on it through the outside of his pants. Mm. And we sat there and it felt like old times. Mm. And then I remembered he left me for a fat bitch. And I went home. He left you for a fat bitch? Mm-hmm. And she smoked cigarettes. <laughs> you look like... Mm, I don't and so, the cigarettes. Yeah, I was, I was proud of myself. I went, I, I went home. Well, good for you. I'm lying. I went to his hotel room. <laughs> You did what? You were sucking and fucking all night, huh? All night. All night long. And that's really why my ponytail is messed up. <laughs> I could have made it last a little longer. Hold that. She was just going to hold that, y'all. She was just going to tell y'all. I can't lie to my besties. I'm sorry, y'all. I really, I really was going to lie to y'all. No, well, was it, it went worth down. it? It was so worth it. And it wasn't even dramatic afterwards. So it was like, I'm good. Afterwards? Um, I woke up in the morning. He called me an Uber. He's staying very close to where I live. And uh, we talked. We had breakfast. We had coffee. And mm -hmm. it was great. It was like, it was really good to see you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad somebody had a successful sex section this weekend and didn't end up injured. Yeah, I didn't I enjoy you know. My body does feel like it was kind of in a train wreck because he's a very large man, but mm -hmm. it was worth it. I feel you, girl. Well, hopefully next week will be better for me. If not, oh well. Um, that's it for today, you guys. If um, Remember to listen to our Patreon episodes. New episodes drop every Monday. Patreon.com slash cocktails. Um, and then follow us online on Instagram. We are at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. And until next week, you guys, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry. But the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.